All right, time now is um, 11.54 a.m. on September 6th. Um, yeah, I slept from 4 a.m. to... I woke up at like 10.30, naturally. And I just stayed on my bed and rolled around for a little bit um, until like 11.30. So yeah, uh, it's pretty crazy that, you know, I can go to bed like a whole hour early and I would still fall asleep like immediately. Um, anyways, yeah, last, yesterday wasn't very productive at all. I had like an hour and a half phone call with Tova. I was cooking food, but then I also wanted to call Tova. And then, so I was heating up the pan to dry the water. Um, and I went to my room and called Tova for like 11 minutes, forgetting that I had the heater on. Um, and so the Jewish woman turned it off for me and was like, oh, you forgot. And then, um, yeah, and then, okay, yeah, and then I kept on having the phone call with Tova even after, while having the meal and after having the meal, and, um, yeah, that's basically it, and, you know, just updating each other on what's going on, I think my life, you know, in the last couple of weeks have been pretty wild, because of my return to CMD and all that shit. But, you know, I told her stuff about the new 33 and, you know, the interview plans. So essentially, we th are thinking that maybe we should interview Tyler. Um, and so uh, Tova actually asked Tyler last night if when will he be free. And Tyler responded earlier this morning saying that he will return to LA on the 11th. So maybe we will get to interview Tyler um, and then, um, we want to do Benny part two, and we're going to do our joint interview on September 8th, and then finally we're going to have a DIT day where we transfer files to each other, and we're probably going to do it at CMD uh, for fun, but also because I want to film one shot at CMD for the, for the last shot of the documentary, which is going to be like a shot of CMD campus at sunset. And then we're probably going to go to main campus or something to discuss the outline for the documentary, which is going to be very fun. Um, but yeah, looking forward to this documentary. This documentary is going to make numbers. Um, yeah, um, I, yeah, I'm going to turn 21 years old in about two hours and it's um, weird, nor do I really care. The more birthdays you have, the more it doesn't really matter. But I think this time is the first time I actually kind of do something about it. Like today, of course, I'm going to have the amazing solo celebration. I'm going to order takeout. I'm going to listen to good music. I'm going to watch Pather Panchali. Last night, I didn't watch Sicario. It's a two-hour film and... I, I just can't. It's too late. So I'm going to watch that, like, later. So today's actually quite eventful because I have two YouTube videos to film. I need to go to Ralph's to buy food real quick. Um, Even though I actually don't need to, I think. Um, But then in the next few days, I won't be as free. Um, And then... um. Yeah, I need to clear some storage space as well for my phone. Um, and I'm going to watch four episodes of Cowboy Bebop and then watch Pather Panchali, which I think is like two hours long as well. Um, but yeah, tonight's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. I think I'm going to order tacos again. I think I did that last birthday. I'm going to do that again this birthday because it's the one thing to eat if you're in LA, if you want good food. And then I'll have the chocolate cake slice. And then to tomorrow is going to be insane. I'm going to bring my camera to CMD. And then tomorrow night is going to be wild. So, yeah. And also, um, Tova told me that before I leave, before we leave, we should have a drink with Benny and Lizzie. And just, like, drink alcohol together. Because now that I'm 21, it's legal. We could actually do it. So we should just go out and have drinks. And I'm like, sure. You know, finally. Finally getting into my alcoholic arc, you know. Finally. It's, it's been long overdue. 
Um, but, um, yeah. There's so many things I wanted to, like, wait to do with Leslie. Like, drinking, smoking, getting high, whatever. But, I don't know. It doesn't really matter now, does it? <sighs> okay. Well, that's that for today. So, uh, today's gonna be fun. And it's great that I woke up a little earlier than usual, because now I just, um... You know, I have more time to do shit. Also, I got another complaint. So, Elena, the Jewish woman, didn't directly text me, but she texted the Persian woman who, um, you know, the Airbnb host, Moon. And then Moon texted me, complaining again, like, Elena said you, you turn on the AC all night and turn on all the lights and whatever. First of all, I slept late. So yeah, at 3 a.m. the lights were still on because I was still fucking awake. Second of all, my AC is at 72 degree Fahrenheit. That's like nothing. It's using electricity, but it's not using that much. It's not like I'm turning it down to 60 fucking Fahrenheit, you know? Also, like, Moon was like, why are you turning on the AC when the weather is so cold? Why are you turning the AC on? Like, it's not fucking cold. It's the hottest month of the year. That's a fucking illusion. That's a lie. So, yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is September 6th, 2.04 p.m. Fuck, I, I was on a call with someone else and I, and I forgot to film 1.59 turned to 2 p.m., but it doesn't really matter because I don't know the exact time of when I am born. I, I only know that it's around September 7th, 5 a.m., which is about, uh, which is essentially the U.S., Pacific time equivalent of September 6th, 2 p.m. So, ladies and fucking gentlemen, I'm 21 years old. Fuck me. Oh my god. Honestly, um, you know, just given that I've gone through so many birthdays already, Turning 21 doesn't really mean jack shit. It's not like I'm a new person or anything. But, um... Yeah, um... Fuck, I'm old. I, I feel like mentally, I'm still stuck at 19. Like, I don't know why, but I'm forever 19 years old. I'm forever 18, 19 years old. Like, I I feel like the last few years are, are not really, like... They, they didn't really happen, you know? <laughs> Or they just happen too fast. Um, yeah, um, but I remember people talking about, and it's not just one person, I remember multiple people saying that, you know, the 20s are the best time of your life. And essentially that's 20 to 29, the 10 years, and one year's already gone. And did I have a great time? Yeah, I think I did. Not great in a positive sense, but great in a roller coaster up and down sense. I feel like the last year of my life has been quite entertaining, not in a very great way. But um yeah, I'm hopefully on my 21st year of my life. My 21st year. I guess this is my 22nd year. Yeah, I guess this is my 22nd year of my life. I hope my 22nd year is going to be even more interesting and hopefully more successful and less painful. Um, so yeah, this is going to be a very cool video because today is, I think, the first time in so long where I actually look forward to my birthday. First time in a while. Usually nothing happens on my birthday. My original idea to celebrate my own birthday is to watch a good movie, eat some good food, listen to good music, and that's it. And just have a nice time alone. But the funny thing is, this year, I have friends. And so I am potentially going to hang out with friends. And it's not just one friend it's multiple so 
today is gonna be the solo day. I'm gonna eat good food, watch good movie, but tomorrow is going to be very interesting because I'm going to CMD. I'm going to school. I'm going to college, and some interesting people will show up, and some interesting things will happen, and I want to be there. And even though that technically isn't celebrating my birthday, but that's that's interesting. So that's already in some way my own way of celebrating my birthday. Tomorrow night, I'm going to go to my old apartment to celebrate my birthday with a couple old roommates who decided to be very nice to me for some reason. Which is weird, like people being nice to me, like it's 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 a crazy concept. Um, and then on September eighth, I'm going to do a joint interview with my friend Tova because we're uh doing something crazy that I will not disclose too much. And then on that night, I will be watching a movie at the Academy Museum with another friend, Michelle. On September ninth, um. I will go out more and potentially hang out with people more. So um, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be the crazy next few days. So um, brace yourselves, brace myself. I I don't fucking know. Okay, I wanna give a little bit more update on my thoughts on this track. Um, I know that this track is essentially a tribute to Technoblade and um. I didn't really catch that right off the bat, but now that I've re-listened to the track, I realize, oh yeah, this track is probably written for Technoblade. And I'm really happy that Dream has written a song for Technoblade. I am a huge fan of Technoblade. Like, I started watching Technoblade back in 2016. Like, I was such a huge fan. And, and to see Technoblade growing his fan base, getting into Minecraft Mondays, and then getting into the Dream SMP and and all those things is really fantastic. Like he is one of the reasons why I started a YouTube channel in the first place. But that being said though, I still think the track is bad. Like just turning Technoblade's passing into this fun, punky little pop tune is just not very tasteful in my opinion. It's just essentially him making a, a cool little song and, and and that's really it it's just not very tasteful and I, I i don't think technoblade's passing deserves this kind of musical treatment i i just really don't think that is necessary at all so uh yeah again i respect dream for writing a song for technoblade i just don't think this song is done in good taste at all. Okay, this is just truly spectacular. I'm trying to cook a meal here and holy fuck, this place is like the dirtiest kitchen of all times. Like, this is probably left here for like two days at least. This weird plastic bag of black trash and like green water sauce. What, what the fuck is that? What is that? Like sponge with some white thing? Like, is that rotten garlic? Is, are those carrots? Like, what's that weird brown stain on that thing? What is this random plastic jar of water with, like, bits of... What, what are those? Dead spiders? And then, like, if you open the fridge... So, she stuffed some stuff on, on in my fridge. You just randomly... This fuzzy, sticky... Uh, plum uh, just plopped onto the shelf like that. She's got a half-eaten banana. Is it? Is it completely eaten? I don't know. It's just. Oh my god! And it, it smells like. Oh my god! It's actually insane. The floor is sticky. It's got like. Oh. Oh. Ugh. Oh, like these towels are probably 30 years old. Oh, oh, this is, uh, this is amazing. Like, this is actually amazing. All right, just got back from Ralph's. 34 bucks. This is what I got. Lettuce. 
Butterfingers, Sour Patch Kids, uh, some brown eggs that, uh, okay, uh, bok choy, big one, carrot sticks, this one we got a bunch of onions, alcohol spray, very much needed, can of soup, that's clam chowder right there. Noosa yogurt, peach flavor, and finally, two avocados. Very healthy. All right, time now is 8.44 p.m. I just finished going to Ralph's, and um, I'm already hungry as fuck. I didn't eat anything this... Uh, I, I have eaten stuff today, and the stuff is... Um, pumpkin spiced donut but it's actually a cake but shaped like donut and then um for lunch it was actually kind of um heavy it's indomie noodles um with peanuts a fried egg bits of beef and bits of cabbage and right now i'm hungry again um so i'm the plan right now is i'm going to immediately order something on grubhub or doordash I'm going to have the meal, and then I'm going to eat the cake a little bit later tonight. That's the deal. There we go, ladies and gentlemen, I ordered something. Um, several thoughts came to my mind on what to eat. Um, um, I thought that since I'm leaving LA soon, I should eat tacos again. It's I don't know why, but like tacos are like my number one delivery item. I always order tacos uh, for food delivery, Del Taco, Taco House, Tacos to Madre and Westwood. But this time I'm trying a new restaurant called Benny's Tacos and Chicken Rotisserie, which is hilarious. Um, and I also checked the reviews on Yelp. Uh, I checked the number of reviews on Grubhub. Seems like it's not like some weird shady random place. So I ordered, I ordered a two taco plate plus a side of house salad. Honestly, it's not that expensive. Together, um, it's $19 plus tax, plus tips, plus deliveries fee, plus driver's fee. It all turns into $32, which is not as expensive as I thought it would be. So you know what? I am fine with it. And right now, I'm just going to wait for my first birthday dinner out of the three, I guess. Look, where's my delivery? It's in the wrong address? Where the fuck is my delivery? Ten, fifth, five, three, four. What the fuck? I don't get it at all. Where's my delivery? All right, mission accomplished. That was awkward. Well, 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 let's see what do we have inside. This seems like a lot more than I ordered. I assume this thing is the salad. Yes, it is, with no sauce. <laughs> Seriously? Okay, this has got to be the tacos. Oh, all right, yeah. Oh, wow, okay. So right here we have... Pinto beans. And then right here we have... Shoot, I'm running out of space so bad right now. Some rice. 
Yep, these are the tacos. So I ordered um, al pinto, which is apparently some sort of um, Mexican pork. And the other is simple shredded beef. There we go. Not bad. What are these? Oh, these are the sauces. Okay. Fuck, where do I? If only I had a large table, like I used to, back in the Sawtell apartment. Okay, we have four salsa dips. And then what's this? Nacho chips. Oh my god, this is a huge meal. Huge, huge meal, huge meal. I'm not even sure if I can finish all this. Okay, I just added the ranch sauce, but I just realized another thing. I don't have any eating utensils. Fuck. Okay. All right, now the meal is complete. Okay, with my very limited amount of space here, let's eat the salad first. As per always, salad always comes first. This thing is like five dollars and a half. I don't really see why. I can make something like that. All right, next thing, the nacho chips. There are four dips. I accidentally spilled some here. Let's try this one then. Not bad, a little sour, a little spicy. Let's try this one then. Pretty nice. Wow, really spicy. I believe this is guacamole. This is going to be a thumbnail. Happy birthday to me. My friend, thank you for attending my birthday dinner. Hmm. Hmm. Let's try this. My eyes are blind right now. Okay. Next thing you know, the tacos. Um, got some lime juice over here. Let's just squeeze a little. Squeeze a little. They really don't have to give me four freaking limes. Squeeze a little. Okay. Blah. Okay. Let's try this. So it appears there are some onions, some cilantro. I don't know what these are. Some pulled pork. Not pulled pork, just pork. Mexican pork. Okay. Since I can't cook pork in this place, might as well. Okay. Ooh. All right. Without further ado, cheers. Those are pineapples. Those are actually pineapples. Okay, you know what, let's try this. This is this very, very simple beef. It's a, oh my God. Uh, chopped up radish. Um, It broke. Cilantro, okay, it's fine. We can still eat it. Cheers. Mm. 
quite fantastic. I guess the final two things to try is the rice and the beans. So, rice looking a little dry, unfortunately. Yeah, it's a bit dry. We need to combine these salsa with rice. Salsa y picante. Y no fuimo. Okay. Let's try the pinto beans. The shredded cheese has become solid again. Okay, it's fine. Y no fuimo. <laughs> beans are beans. Beans are beans. Not great, not terrible. Just right. It's not bad. This is not bad. The salad is a little disappointing because it's not included with any sauce, but I think it's not a bad meal at all. Definitely at least a hundred thousand times better than whatever food I cook on my own. Cheers. Un video, mami, gente, para esta vaina. Salsa y picante. Y no fuimo. Oh, diablo. All right, time now is 11.47. PM. Just finished a dinner and um, had a one hour phone call with Retablo and it's already nearly midnight. Oh my god, time really flies. So nothing all that crazy happened today, really. I tried my extreme best to be as productive as possible. Like right off the bat in the morning, I filmed reviews and then I immediately um, edited one review and then I watched one episode of Cowboy Bebop and it's already like fucking 6 PM. So I went out to um ralph's came home and it was already like 8 30 so i immediately called grubhub like ordered food on grubhub ordered tacos and it's it's pretty enjoyable i wouldn't say it's like the greatest tacos ever but i had fun having the meal it's delicious it's nutritious it's a huge meal and i had leftovers i had half a box of salad and half a box of pinto beans which i'm gonna save for i don't even know when but yeah, it's really tasty, really, I feel really full, which is great, perfect feeling to have on your birthday. And uh, various people said happy birthday to me, uh, including uh, my family, my aunt, my mom's side, my dad's side, Retablo said happy birthday to me, um, and also um, Cedric said happy birthday to me. Out of all people, I believe he forgot to say that last year, but he said it to, to me this year. I think it's because... I sort of reminded him of that, um, but yeah, that's pretty cool, um, and that's pretty much it, I'm really looking forward to tomorrow, um, I am probably gonna run out of time, I need to watch three more episodes of Cowboy Bebop, I don't think I'll have the time, um, I don't even know, but, um, it's not bad, okay, I ordered food on Grubhub, and the address is wrong on Grubhub. For some reason, Grubhub detects my address and it detected the address wrongly. And so it sent the driver to the house beside this apartment building. So I changed my clothes and everything and I went down and I can't find the fucking house. And then I eventually found it and it was really awkward. It was this old white woman and this guy, I think he is, I don't know, Southern European or or something or turkish or something and he was just standing there looking really confused he just ordered my food he's standing outside the door but the food is not outside the door 
it's inside. And the old woman, the old white woman kept yelling like, hey, open the door, open the door, you know. And I thought that white woman was like the mom in the house. But apparently she's like a neighbor or something. And then she asked me if I can text them. And I'm like, I don't know them. And then a couple white girls opened the windows on the second floor and was like, what's going on? And then the delivery guy said nothing. He was like, he was just standing there awkwardly. And then so another mom, the actual mom of the house opened the door downstairs and my food was there. So it's kind of weird, but that got resolved. Came back, had the meal, tummy, yummy, yummy in your tummy. And um, really nice um, finish to the day, really. Really nice finish. Um, gonna watch the movie though. Oh, damn. Okay, it's already 0001. I was gonna film like, oh my god, September 7th, 00000, but oh well. Okay, it's like um, 1247 at midnight. This is my cake. This is a uh, cookies and cream cake. I've had this before already. I originally didn't intend this to be my birthday cake. Originally, it's supposed to be like a breakfast or something. But you know what? Uh, I have this cake now. It's from Ralph's. I don't think I can finish all of it today. It's fine. I'll leave some for tomorrow. Thank you. Happy birthday to me. Oh, so sweet. Oh. All right, time now is 9.52 a.m. on September 7th. Whoa, I'm 21. Whoa, oh my God, oh my God. So I slept from 5 a.m. to 9 a.m. I woke up naturally. Uh, I set the alarm at 9.15. So yeah, last night I couldn't immediately fall asleep. Because of my right eye, or my left eye, this one. I don't know why, I like right on bed like after I brushed my teeth and everything I went to bed my eye started freaking out I don't know what happened it was so uncomfortable and I, I scratched it a little bit and I realized I probably shouldn't do that but by then it was already so late and it was like getting my eye was like getting wet and it was like sort of hurting it was very uncomfortable and I'm like no no fucking way I'm getting a pink eye, I'm getting an eye infection out of all the possible days. Out of all the fucking possible days, it has to be my birthday. So that was scary, but thankfully it stopped. I went to the sink to wash my eye. So that's that. But yeah, yesterday was not very productive. Um, even though I tried my very best, I ended up not watching Pother Punch Holly at all. Th that's why I'm waking up this early today, exactly because I need to watch Pather Panchali this morning. So today I'm potentially watching three films. I'm watching Pather Panchali this morning, and today afternoon for film five I'll be watching The Big Chill, and then t tonight I'll be watching something with um, Ashley or whatever. Ashley said happy birthday to me, so that's great. Uh... Cedric said happy birthday to me yesterday. Leia finally remembered to say happy birthday to me. Like twice, I think. One on Instagram and one in WhatsApp. For some reason. Um, um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I hope Leslie says happy birthday to me today. Even though that probably won't happen. Um... And I also forgot to mention that last night, um, I dreamed, uh, no, last night, uh, fucking Moon, the Airbnb host, tried to extort me for money. She tried to make me pay her $200 for utilities. And I'm like, okay, where's the bill? And she's like, usually the bill arrives after I leave, but the, uh, but the person must pay before the bill arrives. And, I'm, and I didn't respond to that, but in my head, I'm like, that doesn't make any sense at all. You're just trying to scam me here. I will not pay until I see the bill. If the bill says uh, the AC, it will cost me $5 million. I'll pay $5 million because I've agreed to that, you know? 
but if the bill, but if I pay 200 and the bill says, oh, I actually only need to pay 100, then you just fucking scam me a hundred dollars. That's extortion, bro. So yeah, not very legal, bro. I'm going to take it up to the fucking police, to the lawyers. And another thing is, uh, this morning I had a very beautiful, sweet dream where I returned to Hong Kong and I hung out with Natalie and Cedric and a few other people. And I used my own camera to film them, like this one. And, um, we were back at the school, but it was just like a hangout, you know. And I remember being really close to Natalie for some reason. Like, I would just, like, joke around with her, laugh at her. And it would just be, like, a fun, friendly hangout. Yeah. I realize I don't dream about people like Leslie or Cliff or whatever. Even though I see them quite a bit. But for some reason, I haven't seen Natalie or Cedric at all, but keep dreaming about going back to Hong Kong. I think it's the right choice, for sure. If I dream about it so much. But yeah, that's pretty much it. You know, today I got film five, and then afterwards I'm going back to the old apartment. It's going to be wild. It's going to be very fun. I'm going to charge my phone and everything. I am I hope I, like, drink alcohol and have fun tonight. Also, kind of unimportant information, but I woke up naturally at nine. I set the alarm at 9.15, so I somehow fell back asleep for like 15 more minutes. And I was so tired that I'm like, fuck it, I'll go back to sleep a little more. Risking the fact that I may oversleep. And I over and I slept for half more hour until I naturally woke up again. So, uh, yeah, I didn't even finish the birthday cake. So I'm going to finish it like this morning as breakfast. Um... Yeah, tonight I'll have another cake anyways. So, uh, yeah, holy fuck. And then tomorrow I'll, hopefully tonight I sleep early. If I stay at the old apartment really late, I may have to like Uber home. Or like Uber here. Um, and then tomorrow I have to wake up early again. So, uh, fuck. <sighs> fuck. We're running out of time going to class. <sighs> All right, it's 6.29 p.m. Class just ended. Um ended for about an hour uh, honestly actually um one thing i would like to highlight is uh she said happy birthday to me twice and i didn't react to it i i thought actually about it last night if she says happy birthday to me how should i react i was gonna do this thank you you know just chuckle and a quiet thank you like the anime main character that i try to be but at that point, I was, it was sort of like in this awkward moment where some other people are there and he was like a few steps, a few meters away from me. So I yelled out, oh, thank you. And I, and I did this. And she said it twice. But hey, at least she remembered. She, no, she didn't remember. She saw my Instagram story and fucking remembered. I think that's what happened. Either way, she could have said nothing, but she did say something. So at least I'm thankful for that. Not too bad. Um, and I ask nothing more of her, really. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to wait a whole hour before I get to my old apartment, so I'm gonna do that. I'm back. Oh my god. Hey. 
Oh my good? goodness. <laughs> we also got a cake for you. Oh my goodness. Thank you. I, I, I... <laughs> oh god, PTSD flashback. Oh, yeah? Oh, and like, what is this? Oops, I'll play a different one. In Korea, the birthday. people who, yeah. his birthday should call I mean, the, I did that too, cake. right? Ooh, okay. He's missing his seaweed soup. I will slice oh. this thing in half. And it's, that seaweed soup is the one mom made. Okay. Yeah. Like, yeah. You, you guys celebrated on the first, like, first day of the year. I am now actually no, coming. Oh, yeah. So, there we go. That is the hangout. Time now is, uh, 11.52. Um, it's okay. But I don't think I can ask for any more. Um, I'm not drunk or anything. Everyone barely drunk, barely drank anything. Um... But it's good because I didn't pay a single fucking dime for a good meal and a good cake. Um, yeah. Have you heard of? All right, time now is 12.54 after midnight. <sighs> okay, where do I begin? So yeah, today is my birthday and you know what? It is um, absolutely um, fantastic. It, it, it's way better than I thought it would be. And it's legitimately probably one of the best birthdays I've had since a long time ago like i forgot the last time i truly truly was like wowed by my birthday i guess in a sense my 2019 birthday was also kind of a wow for me because of the biology field trip and mary was there and then i was in the potato gang apartment uh, oliver's apartment for three hours and then i had very good dinner and then i watched parasite that was really epic but like Today, it wasn't that fulfilling, like, I guess in another universe, I could spend this birthday with Leslie, and we would be having a great time together, but what was presented to me today is, I think, ultimately the best thing that could happen to me possible, under the pretext that is, um, what happened in in the last round also let me apply some anti-acne stuff on my face all right i'm back um yeah so today is absolutely insane so again part one and part two the first half and the second half the first half is me going to film five the second half is me going back to the old old apartment um so first half I ran out of time this morning. Like, even this morning, I tried to wake up early just so that I can watch Pather Panchali. Didn't work. I only watched half of it. The video buffered a few times, and uh, <laughs> breakfast is taking way longer than expected. Um, I planned to have French toast as breakfast, and then, like, eggs and bacon. Like, I was going to go downstairs to cook myself egg and bacon, and then call it a big brunch and then head over to CMD. But because I'm watching Pater Banchale, I don't have time to cook or anything. So I'm just eating the half a cake I had last night. The half a cookie and cream Oreo cake that was left over. And then for lunch, it was basically the salad kit I had. Plus the pinto beans that, I that, that was left over. So yeah, that's that. And then <laughs> I cleared some storage space on my phone. I cleared some storage space on my camera and I'm ready to roll. Right before I left, I left the apartment door and I'm like, hold on. Am I forgetting something? Right. Because my roommates, Rachel and Ashley, are throwing this party for me. I need to give something back. 
Like I was calling Rotavo last night. Rotavo was like, you got to give something back. And I'm like, yeah, I know, but I have no idea. And last night I thought to myself, why not give them Sakuma Drop candies that I got in Tokyo, which are very underwhelming in comparison with what they have prepared for me. But, um, yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's the best I got. And again, you can't find this shit in LA. So, you know, it's cool. Anyways, I busted out the door and I was off to CMD. And I was so scared that I'm going to be late again. Um, and not late to film 5, but late to film 33. Because I know that there's only the second film 33 class. And, um, you know, it's like... Um, in in the second class in my film 33 my laptop is fucking screaming in the second class of my film 33 we left early we left at around 1 p.m i think because we just didn't have much to do so i was scared that that's gonna happen the same so i arrived at cmd at around 110 and cmd was empty it was dead empty and there are people, but I, I don't know any of them. I went into the building and I saw Ken. And um, I saw Ken and Ken essentially told me um, like, hey, what's up? You know, and Ken was about to tell me something. Um, he went to the bathroom to take a piss. And I thought that everyone's left. Everyone in the film, new Film 33 class is gone. And Ken is the only one staying behind, chilling around for no reason. So I'm like, oh man, damn it. You know, I brought a camera and everything and I was ready to, um, you know, film stuff. I was ready to really, um, you know, film shit, you know, film insert shots of like you know, the new 33 students as part of the documentary and also speak to the new 33 people. So it was kind of a, you know, a shame. And then she's like, no, 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 everyone's still inside. You can join us if you want. And I'm like, what, what, join what? And he explained that they're watching the French film and I'm like, read my lips. And he's like, yeah, read my lips. So they're doing exactly what we did last semester. They're watching the French film Read My Lips by Jacques Odia and Cuchillo is talking about directing, you know, he's teaching people how to direct by watching this film. And then apparently they're still doing that now and Ken only walked out to take a piss break. Um, and then a little bit later I saw another person walk out and I'm like, oh my god, the film 33 people are still inside. So I waited for about three more minutes four more minutes and then boom the film 33 people took a break they had lunch already but they took a break anyways and it was like 1 30 and i saw everyone i saw every fucking person there is i saw the wednesday group so the wednesday group and the friday group are very much hanging out together the wednesday group are the big bright ones who are hanging out in the circles, in the circular tables, in the main quad, it's um, Jordan, uh, yeah, fucking Ken is there, another girl, I think her, uh, her name is Maddie, um, Ariel showed him, Ariel's like, Enoch, it's been so long, and she actually came in for a hug, um, she looks like Mona Lisa, like, you know. I can't believe I'm hugging a person who has had sex before. Like, just... I'm gonna talk about that a little bit more later, but that that's kind of crazy. And then everyone from Eric with a K to Gregory to... I don't think I saw Sean. Uh, to Gibson. But yeah, they were there. And then I saw David. And then I saw the Friday people. So Cliff and Justin walked past me. They saw me. They I think they said hi or whatever, but they walked past me. And they went to the entrance of CMD. And I was distracted talking to Andrew K, who is the tall Jewish white guy who I was taking film 32 with. Andrew K is also in 33. 
and I spoke with him. I asked him, you know, how's Sprinkles? How's Film 33? How's everything, you know? And, you know, he's super nice about it. And then I went out and I saw the Friday Film 32 people, now in 33, Cliff, Justin, Hansu, the Korean guy, fucking Harrison, Chiara, the Italian woman, and a bunch of uh, Jade, the French girl, Cassandra, the Spanish girl. They're all like they're smoking or even if they're not smoking, they're just standing there. But most of them are just smoking and vaping. And Lauren joined. Um, and so, yeah, I, I, I joined them and I talked with them a little bit. I filmed them as well. I tried to be as subtle as possible. I actually asked Ariel, like, you know, I, I really want to know who's going to be UPN and who's going to be BTS. And Ariel's like, ooh, you're up to something evil, you know, in a joking way. But I know Ariel knows that I am truly up to something. And then when I talked to Kiara about, like, me wanting to know who the next BTS people are, Kiara is also like, oh, you're going to do something evil with it? Like, what, like you're going to do something about it? Um, so people already like automatically know that I'm up to something and I'm onto something and Cliff just straight up told them, oh, it's the doc, <laughs> which I wish he would keep a secret, but I think he will for the most part because he's not the loose lips kind of guy. But yeah, I f filmed a bunch of very cool slow-mo shots with the camera, but the huge issue is a few of the coolest shots I got was Harrison smoking a cigarette and cigarette smoke coming out of the cigarette bud and then I tilt the camera up or, or follow it up to Harrison's face and he didn't see me um and um yeah the issue is I pressed record and it stopped recording I pressed stop record and it started recording and I didn't know because I was I was in s and q mode in my camera like slow and quick so that shit happens and it's so stupid but after that I filmed a few more shots and I basically filmed everyone I know so that was pretty cool uh Cuchillo definitely saw me uh Professor Antonio and Drew also saw me Antonio and Drew said hi to me actually um but of course Cuchillo ignored me apparently Chiara was I don't know if she's being a prankster or whatever but you know, Kiara went up to Cuchillo and asked Cuchillo, hey, can Enoch join us to, you know, to check out the Sony Venice? Because they're doing the Sony Venice thing after the break. I didn't even ask her to do that. What the fuck? And then Cuchillo's like, hmm, he, it's better not, you know, he, it's not a good idea. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Cuchillo must have think, oh my god, this Enoch guy is like infiltrating the class. Like, holy shit. I'm not even doing it. They're fucking infiltrating the class on my behalf. Kiara's saying shit. Like, what, what the fuck, you know? So it's wild. Another really wild moment is outside the soundstage when they were inside. When the Film 33 people are inside. I saw Leslie. As well as Jake, the cam op for WoW. And Leslie saw me and I was thinking, hmm, I wonder if she'll say happy birthday. And I was holding a camera, like being all suspicious. And she was like at least 10 meters away from me or like eight meters ish. And we were, oh, we had a distance, you know. And Leslie shouted, hey, you know, happy birthday. And my, like I, last night I imagined that something like this would happen. Like if Leslie doesn't say happy birthday to me, it's fine. It's not the end of the world. It's to be expected. If she, if she does though, here's my reaction. I'm going to be like, thank you. And it's going to be like a sweet little chuckle, you know, what does it mean? You know, oh, but I couldn't do that because I was just sneaking around with a camera, like being suspicious. So I was like caught off guard and I was like, Oh, thank you. And then I walked up to her and Jake and I was like literally right behind her and she said it again. Happy birthday. And I'm like, thank you. And I don't know what to do. So I just did the thumbs up. Like I got Liamified. Like Liam does this whenever he's awkward. He just does a thumbs up. 
I'm like, thank you. So fucking lame, but that's like my automatic reaction. Um, but yeah, she said happy birthday to me. Holy shit. Um, so Cedric said happy birthday to me yesterday. Uh, Leia said happy birthday to me. Um, I think Miriam said happy birthday to me, but only because I texted her, um, saying, you know, you know, I'm going back to Hong Kong. Um, and then, um, yeah, you know, after this morning's dream, first thing I did after I woke up, after I brushed my teeth is actually texting Natalie. I texted Natalie and I was like, hey, yo, I said, yo, I'm going back to Hong Kong. And all Natalie responds is like one word responses. He said, cool. And I'm like, yeah, I'll be going back on September 18th. You know, let's have lunch. Noise. She doesn't say nice. She said noise. Like the meme, like noise. And, and, and she's forever stuck saying that. Like anything else is just unacceptable, I guess. And then I'm like, yeah, so, you know, we can hang out and have lunch and maybe Cedric can join us. And then she says, yeah like that's it and then I told her oh you know Cedric I actually asked Cedric whether I should come back to Hong Kong or not and I was going to ask you a while ago but I didn't because I already made up my mind and she said bruh and I said oh when I asked Cedric Cedric wrote a whole essay and Natalie's like like and then I said oh yeah Cedric basically set this entire thing about how career it should be more important than family and friends and Natalie's like oh it's so lame it's like I get it because I'm not that important in Natalie's life I wasn't really that important like there were tons of more important cooler people in Natalie's life I'm sure if I and Natalie are in the same class right now in university I would probably have a way huger impact on her I know that's big words but given my character change um and given her character change actually I actually don't know her personality now. I feel like I would have had a much more impact on her. But I, um, yeah, you know, I, I was a little like, okay, fine. You know, she's just not interested. Um, and then a little bit later tonight, and then that's during the second half of the day at around 8 p.m. ish, she was like, Oh, shit, it's your birthday. I almost completely forgot. It was yesterday, but it's actually still September 7th for me. But for her, it's September 8th already. And she's like, fuck, okay. I mixed you and Cedric up because Cedric's birthday is September 10th. Um, And then she's like, oh, happy birthday. And I'm like, oh, at least you remember. Um, And then and I also told her, like, hey, this is like your first non-one-word response in a while. And she's like, really? Oh, I, I just did another one word response. So, yeah, you know, that's that. And then, um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Anyways, I digress. Going back to CMD. Took film five. I saw Christian. And the bald professor was like at the quad already for a while. So he probably see me talking to everyone and he probably thinks, okay, this guy's kind of weird. Took film five. We watched The Big Chill. Not a bad movie at all. Then we, uh, you know, lectures and whatever. There's a break. Um, but everyone's gone during the break already. The break was like <clears throat> at around... 4 p.m. and at that point everyone's already gone um <clears throat> so I went back to the auditorium we watched the big chill after that it was like nothing done yeah so I was gonna walk up to the professor and just tell him like hey <clears throat> I'm gonna drop this class in a few days because and I want to say it at the very end so that like if I say it in the beginning and then I still go through with the class, he may think, okay, this guy's just fucking, you know, enjoying my class for free. Like, what the fuck? That's a very petty thought, but maybe he'll react that way. But I thought it would be responsible for me to at least tell him why am I going to disappear? So I was going to talk to him, but 
like a few people who was going to do a presentation next Thursday have to talk to him first. So instead, I went outside and I saw Kiara. And Kiara's like, oh, we're all there. Like Cliff and Lauren and Harrison are all there, like having another smoke break. And Harrison's chit-chatting with Jade, the French girl again. I swear there's like a thing between Harrison and Jade. Um, so I went there and I talked with them a little bit and it's pretty nice. Um, and I saw Cliff and Lauren talking about like tech stuff, nerding out. Even in class when they were looking at the Venice, I took a peek through the soundstage door and I see Lauren and Cliff talking. Like they're just like little nerd buddies, which is great. I'm glad they finally met. Like I met Lauren back in October and I think I also met Cliff during the same time. But Lauren was on Thomas's shoot as DP and Cliff was like the DIT for Alba shoot. So now the worlds have collided, you know. Um, yeah, but it's just fucking crazy how I know all these people. Anyways, I, I went back in, the ball professor still talking with them. I went back out and then finally I just stayed at that CMD entrance area. And I, I, I was thinking, oh, the ball professor have to walk through this entrance or at least have to be near in order to get to his car. So I waited there and Alex, the Brazilian guy, shows up and I spoke with him a little bit. And he and then the ball professor shows up and then he spoke to the ball professor. And after he spoke, I ran up to him and I explained to him and it was nice. I wasn't able to have like an in-depth film nerd out chat with him, even though that would have been very fun. But that was not possible. Um, but yeah, still, you know. It's, um, it's cool, you know, he's nice about it. He's like, oh, so you're going back home? And then I told him that I'm going to USC and how they admitted me for spring, which is weird. I have to explain this whole thing again. Um, and he's like, oh yeah, you film studies. So basically what I studied too, but I was going through film studies in the first place. Um, so that was that. So we left. And I, the plan was I'm going to the old apartment in Sawtell at 7.30. And at that point it was like 5.30 or like 6. So I have plenty of time. So I told Ashley like, hey, can I come earlier? And Ashley's like, no, we won't be home until like 7.30. And I'm like, okay, fine, let's hang around. Like in the middle of film five, Ashley like DM'd me, Enoch, 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 all caps asking me what type of cake I like. And I'm like, oh my God, I don't know. <laughs> like, this is wild. This is fucking, this has never happened before. So I'm like, so I just told him, told her like, I, I mean, anything is great, you know, but I don't want to give such a half ass answer because being an indecisive man is kind of dumb as well. I got to be decisive. So I just told her like, oh, I'm craving some tiramisu, also cheesecake. So he's like, okay. Anyways, I followed Cliff, Kiara, and Jade, walked to the bus stop just to find out that I need to hang around a little more. So I walked back to CMD at around 6.30. And I thought to myself, holy shit. Right. Jason Tameric, the legend himself, is going to show up to teach Film 31 on every Thursday nights. I may run into him. So that's my only reason for going back. I also saw Betsy talking to the ball professor before film five happened, but, and I tried to run up to Betsy and say hi, but she was just gone in the car park. But anyways, I went back to CMD and I went upstairs and I saw this man and it was this man with like a, this hair, like somewhat long with glasses. And I thought he's Ken. So I immediately pulled out my camera because I know I took some videos of Ken today. And I looked at their shirts, they're different. Looked at their shoes, they're different. So I know, okay, it's not Ken. But he was on the second floor in the sitting area watching anime. And so I was like looking at my camera, just thinking about Ken. Because Ken, before walking back to the soundstage, was like, oh, 
Enoch, I got to tell you what happened to me. And then he's like, oh, I can tell you now, but uh, yeah, next time, I'll tell you next time. There may not be a next time, dude. So I, I was going to like talk to him about it. But anyways, suddenly I, I heard, I think in front of me, so I was looking at the conference room, the table read room. This white guy, gray polo shirt, glasses, walked past me. And just very inconspicuously. And I looked. It's Jason Tameric. It's him in the flesh. And then he walked past the elevator. And there's another guy. And the guy was like. And, and he was like. Oh do these elevators like go down? And he's like yeah. So he took the elevators to go down. Just to go out. And I secretly took a video of him. Thinking oh maybe this is going to be my only chance. Like I want to ask to take a picture with him. But if he says no. This will be my only evidence. That I've seen him in person. <clears throat> so I sort of followed him down and then there is where I ran into Victor the Mexican American Victor the Latino who was smoking and drinking energy drink Leslie style and we talked a little bit and I told him oh my god I need to you know take a picture with Jason Tameric and he's like go for it man go for it dude and I was just thinking how socially awkward I get but also, like, this is one of the few moments of my life where that he isn't even that big of a celebrity, but he is a celebrity in this film school. And I just really want to take a picture of him, from, uh, with him. So I'm like, you know, fuck it, I'll do it. So apparently they're not, I thought they're going to have class at 272, which is the old scriptwriting club room. They're not. They're doing it at 202, which is one of the second floor classrooms. The place I took film to in the early days. So I went upstairs again on the other side of the building. And I saw him and he's walking out of the bathroom. He's just jumping everywhere. He went to the office, his office, somewhere near Cuccio's office. And then we, he went upstairs to the bathroom. And then I'm like, okay, this is an opportunity. So I went up to him. Excuse Hey, are you Jason Tamer? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, and I basically explained it to him. Like, I can't just outright ask to have a picture with him because that's weird. So it's better to like have a mini conversation first to like ease into the picture. So I basically told him, oh, you know, I took film 31, 32, 33. We watched so many of your videos. It's crazy that you're teaching here. Oh, Cuccio actually mentioned that you were going to teach here. And the whole class was like, what? And he was so nice about it. And then at the, at, at the very end, I was like, okay, this is kind of a weird question, but can we take a picture? And he's like, sure. Right before that, he even asked me, oh, what's your name? And I said, Enoch. And then he shook my hand. He has sweaty hands. But um, yeah, and we handshaked and everything. And I even told him about USC. And he's like, wow, that's great. Congratulations. But yeah, we took a picture together. It was crazy. Victor saw that. And I sent it to Michelle and Tova immediately. And they were both ecstatic. I posted it on Instagram. And like tons of people liked it, including Leslie. So, you know, the Jason Tameric is real. Oh, my God. All right. So let's continue. Where were we? Right. So um, we talked about seeing Jason Tameric, which is absolutely insane. Tons of people like my story. Tons of people reply to it saying, oh, my God. Wow. I wish this story isn't leaked, but even if it is, who cares? But, um, yeah, it's it's crazy. So, and then after seeing Jason Tamaric, I walked out of CMD. I'm about to take the bus to the old apartment. And I saw Victor again, and I spoke with him a little more. We talked a little more about just, like, my future at USC and whatever. And I'm going to meet him in a couple of days anyways. So, really nice. He said happy birthday to me as well. Um, and, um, that's pretty much it. So, and, and I, I, and I told him, oh, I'm seeing someone later for dinner, you know, so, you know, I gotta go. And I guess because I'm such a dude, like people automatically assume, oh, you know, this guy's probably, probably has a date, like with a girl or something to celebrate birthday with. Ooh, you know, so Victor was like yeah you gotta get the girl dinner you know <laughs> like okay sure and in a way it is it's it's a dinner it's a birthday party dinner set up 
by two girls and not just any girls but like two asian bimbos essentially so like this is fucking hilarious actually so anyways i took the bus took the bus went to the old apartment and um i wouldn't say nostalgic but i would say this is the spot i'm familiar with and it's almost like i've never left it it's like this this place right now it's just like a trip like a little vacation but that spot right there is the real spot anyways i arrived at the front door and i texted both ashley and rachel rachel's like okay i'm i'm coming in I'm, I'm coming to get the door. So she opened the main door and I went in. Or more like Ashley opened the main door. And I went in and they said they haven't really prepared yet. And I'm like, oh, it's okay, you know. And I told them, oh, it doesn't have to be fancy. Like, this is already too much. The fact that they are willing to celebrate with me is already crazy. Like, I was about, I was prepared to use my own money to pay for food. Like, this is already like next level like you don't have to do anything too crazy for me and they're like you know it's okay just sit and relax so yeah so today's celebration was essentially um ashley ashley's friend ricky um rachel rachel's friend the fat cream woman mina and then uh the new girl lycan who was taking a shower as we speak so we sat down and they brought Chinese food. They had a uh, bok choy fried with gar- garlic. Um, and they said, oh, Enoch wanted vegetables. So we got this for him. And there are two plastic trays of uh, Xiaolong Bao's or Xiaolong Bao's. And I had three of them. There's um, fucking um, beef and mushroom fried udon and fried rice with bits of chicken in it. And it's from the restaurant Don, which is in Sawtel, which I never tried before, nor have I ever wanted to try. But I, I told them both, like, hey, you know, I'm going back to Hong Kong, so I'll be eating a lot of Chinese food. But, you know, this is great, though. This is amazing. Like, thank you so much for this. And then Lycan showed up. And I thought she's going to be, like, uh, an Asian girl or an Asian American girl, even though the name is Lycan. Kind of weird. She's not. She's actually american she's white um but the name lichen is a little weird so actually a little later when we were eating the cake i asked her so are you american and she's like yeah and i'm like okay are your parents like scandinavian or something or like and she's like oh no it's german so i'm like oh that would be my second guess i should have also guessed like austrian or something but that you know that's like later but yeah she and she doesn't look very american either i know that's weird because um um, white americans are just like white europeans a mix but she just doesn't have that look she looks very foreign i don't know why and it's also funny because she's like the one who sticks out who's not asian but anyways we began to have the dinner and It looked like it's a lot of food, but actually we finished it quite fast and it was, it wasn't that filling, but it was tasty. I'm happy about it. I had tasty tacos last night. I'm having tasty Chinese food today. And, um, I talked about, you know, my move to an Airbnb and to this place and they're like, oh my God, oh my God. And it is only when I talk to them about it, that's when I realize, wow, it actually sounds bad. And they keep bringing up this joke, like, oh, the cinematic experience, because I like filming shit. So they keep bringing up, oh, you should film, like, your stay, you know, your move to the other Airbnb is, like, for the cinematic experience. I like that they're joking, though, about me, because if they're not, then they're just, like, looking, like, they're just ignoring me. So that's great, because back in secondary school, people don't even joke about me, you know? So the fact that people joke about me now is actually a very fucking good sign, you know. Um, anyways. I, um, and then we talked and talked. And then, um, the conversation got a little weirder, um, when Ricky started. So to my right, it's Ricky. To my left, it's Rachel. 
And then beside Rachel is like it. Opposite of me is Mina. And then that side is Ashley. So Ricky started talking about how Asia, he's born in America, but he grew up largely in Vietnamese and he speaks fluent in Vietnamese. But his high school is in here it, and it's a high school in Palm Desert, which is super far away. And it's like one of the worst places ever. And the high school in Palm Desert is essentially a euphoria high school because it is the most whack high school ever. Everyone there has sex and take drugs, essentially. He goes into that place and the seniors or, or like the upper class men told him that like you know you know the usual place for fucking are the elevators and it's gone so bad that the janitors don't want to clean it and so other students would warn him and even the teachers know about this the teachers warn him like, don't touch the walls of the elevators because people are fucking in the elevators. At some point, there was a couple who, who were having sex in front of the security cameras. The janitor came up to them and told them to stop. And the couple was like, wait a minute. And it's just crazy. It's wild. I'm hearing these stories and it doesn't seem like they're real. They're just fucking Netflix euphoria. And then Rachel was like, oh, reminds me of, like, my old roommate. So... Rachel lived in a condo before this apartment with Mina as well and with like three other girls or whatever and one of the girls had a boyfriend and they were having sex in front of everyone. It's fucking wild and and it's a condo so it's like one giant room so everyone's sleeping it's like a sleepover every single day and there are like six people sleeping on the floor and this girl and her boyfriend started having sex thinking that everyone's asleep but even though another person was there and who's clearly not asleep and then next morning Rachel talked to that girl and said that was an inappropriate please don't at some point Rachel saw that guy's balls apparently and that guy's not not even like a big tough Johnny Sins guy, you know, he he's like a short, he's shorter than me. He's like 4'11". Um, I'm 5'8". That guy's like 4'11". And Rachel even joked saying, oh, that guy must have had a tiny dick. And then they talked about how it kept happening a few times. Like, Rachel slept in the closet one time. He She opened the doors and everyone else was asleep. But the, her friend was about to give this guy a blowjob. And again, I'm hearing these stories and it's crazy because I don't think I've ever seen people have sex in, in person, like in front of me before. And that also flashes back to, I think, Alex, the Brazilian guy in the middle of the shoot, uh, in Andrew's shoot on day three, telling us how at some point in Brazil, he was a quote unquote gaffer for like a porn, porno for like an OnlyFans video. And so it's just like someone like me who's never seen people have sex in front of me before, nor have done it myself. It's just like, God damn, you know, the world around me, man, the world around me, you know. And it's like it's the world is trying so hard to make me feel bad. But honestly, I don't. I feel like I've already moved, moved past that point. Um, But yeah, I'm so freaking inexperienced. And I bet... None of the people today in that dinner had a single idea that I've actually, I'm a virgin and I've never dated before, ever. Um, If I tell them I'm a virgin, they probably won't be that surprised. But the fact that I've never dated before, they would probably think I'm a freak. But that's just the person that I am, unfortunately. Um, But I'm going to get to that a little bit more. But the crazy stories continue. Rachel is talking to this other hot guy now. So Rachel's hooking up with all sorts of guys here and there, everywhere. And he's talking to this guy and they have dated. Apparently they were at English class. So new semester just begun. And Rachel's in this English class. 
and the guy sitting next to him, and they already went out for a date. It's only been one fucking week. And I don't know if it's the same guy as the guy, the other guy Rachel was talking to, but the other guy was dating him, and the other guy thought Rachel was a virgin. Obviously, the moment I laid my eyes upon Rachel with her makeup and her outfit, she's anything but a virgin. She's a thought, you know, she's a Korean thought. And, but, but Rachel was laughing about it, saying, like, how and why would she think I'm a virgin? Like, am I going to tell him that, you know, ooh, my mom told me I can't hold hands with guys because we're going to make babies immediately after we hold hands. And we all started laughing. And I also found it funny, like, there's no way anyone would think Rachel is a virgin. That's funny, because I am a virgin. Um... But I'm in a table, I don't, that's why I don't like asking people about their sex lives. And it's also so crazy to me how, like, it's just film students in particular who are pathetic, lonely virgins. But anyways, and then um, Ashley continues to talk about how she's into three guys at once. So there's this super hot, tall, rich Korean guy who's living in Oregon now. Um, and then there's this other dude who she's been talking to for a while, who basically ghosted her and disappeared, and she's really emotionally affected by it all day. Like, there are so many moments today where Ashley would just, like, blank out, and I know exactly why she is doing that. And then she also talked about how this high school classmate of hers from a long time ago, who has had a crush on her for so long, wants to pursue her and she's willing to date him so she's into three guys at once even though she's never even seen the third guy for so long and i told her at the very end of today i i told her oh for me it's like the exact opposite like i get interested in a girl for like a few months and then i have to recover from her you know and that don't that's only happened twice but i didn't tell her that that's only happened twice um, but I guess our definition of into people is completely different. For her, it's casual. Like, he seems interesting, you know, developing. So maybe I'm going to develop some emotional, you know, connection with that person. Because that person seems interesting. And, you know, I'm um, just, you know, horny little girl. To me, is different. To me, love is life and death. Extremely dramatic. This is why I'm so damn good at making platonic friends with girls. Because I don't flirt around. Because I'm either extremely dead serious about being in love with someone. Or I'm just completely not. You know, there's no in between. So there are tons of people like Michelle and Tova that I'm just friends with. And I'm so happy that I'm friends with them. Um, and then there's Leslie. Who is, I was dead fucking serious that I'm in love with her. So, to me, it's it's so extreme, you know. The fact that Rachel can date someone just one week after they meet, while I and Leslie, we know each other since fucking October last year, I confess to her literally half a year later, and we still couldn't date, is really testament of, like, how serious I take it and how bad the timing was for both of us. And also the fact that I am into fucked up women. I'm not into like everyone. It's different from Rachel and Ashley. Like if it's a nice tall guy who is rich, has muscles, green flags, you know, they will consider and they will just date you, whatever. Um, Because they take it so less seriously. So in in, in a sense, it's like, it's weird. It's like, me talking to Rachel and Ashley and then Ricky also mentioned how he had a girlfriend and they were laughing at so the guy who had a crush on Ashley since high school he's not speaking to Ashley directly he's using a messenger a third person and that third person keeps giving advice to him on how to get Ashley when he himself has only dated once. 
And Ricky and Ashley laughed at him. Well, he himself doesn't even have that much dating experience. He's only dated like one person. And Ashley was like, for how long? And Ricky was like, for like a few months, a year maybe. And I just thought to myself, I've never even dated a person, period. Like, holy shit, you know? I am so far behind the curve. But at the same time, will I look at Zach and Salali and say, I want to have a relationship like their relationship? No, because I know the love between Zach and Salali is like cool, casual, healthy love. Or maybe not that casual, but you know, cool, haha love. That is just like, you're a nice person. You're a nice guy. Let's go. Or maybe Benny and Ariel's relationship, which is just really casual and just like fuck around, whatever. But because my idea of what love is is so extreme and so dramatic and my taste in women is so quirky, it it means that my love will be different. I'm sure if if I am into Sidlali. I can get her probably pretty easily too. I'm not going to say that because I suck at everything. But what if I am not? I'm sure getting Sidlali will be at least 200 times easier than getting Leslie. But the thing is, I'm not Zach. And I'm I, my idea of love, my requirements are high. So considering that, I don't feel that bad that I have no experience at all. I'm still a virgin. I still haven't dated at all. But it's okay. At least I'm not going to Andrew Tate, you know, looking for dating advice, going to TikTok looking for dating advice. I am better than that. I'm more mature than that. I'm better than that. I, and I have higher standards than that. So I don't feel bad about myself anymore. I think it's okay, you know. Anyways, that's that. Um... The conversation went a little better when I and Mina talked about like um, languages. And I talked about how I want to collect languages like Infinity Stones. And Mina was like, yeah, me too. Mina wanted to learn German and French. And I'm like, oh yeah, I'm learning Spanish. But I also want to learn Japanese and Korean. And I said, I learned so much. I watched so much anime. I'm beginning to know Japanese actually. And I want to learn Korean that way. And then so um, we actually started talking about anime and she watches tons of anime. I started playing anime music and she asked me where is the anime from and I said Monogatari series. And she's like, oh, Monogatari series, I know that. I haven't watched it, but... And then she called me a maniac. And I'm like, what does that mean? And Rachel explained it to me saying that maniac in Korean basically means I don't like mainstream stuff. That's really cool. I, I told Nina, like my top three is Sonny Boy, Mushishi, Monogatari series. And she's like, oh, okay. And I talked about film and I said two of my favorite directors is Korean and Mina was immediately able to guess Pong Juno and Park Tano and I'm like, yep. And it's also cool because like normally people say Bong Jun Ho, but I, I know the real pronunciation, you know. I even play Hyoko's music and they know that I'm playing Korean music. Um but yeah, you know, I talked about like anime and uh, they were talking about Attack on Titan and how oh it's too mainstream but I explained I actually like it especially the last two seasons when it get political and Mina was like yeah when it gets political and she talked about how the story gets good once Erwin died or she said Alvin but we later figured out it's Erwin but the Japanese Erwin so anyways and uh, um and I said, oh yeah, Erwin. I, it's funny because I forgot the character's name, but I remember the voice actor's name. And Mina was like, Ono Daisuke. And I'm like, yeah, Ono Daisuke. I really like him because he's Jotaro. And Mina was impressed. Mina was like, oh yeah, this guy knows his stuff. Yes, he's Jotaro. Yeah. And then I talked about how I watched a whole anime just for the cast and not for the story, like Spy Classroom. And I explained, oh, Inori Minase. Sakura Ayane, Uesaka Sumire, Kusuno Kitomori, Itomiku, whatever. And she's like, oh, wow, you know. So, and then she even said that her Japanese is just as good as English, which is pretty fucking good. 
I mean, she doesn't speak English natively or as fluently as me, but it's still conversational. If her Japanese is as good as her English, it must be pretty fucking good. So she would have these expressions like she wanted to she wanted to talk about a Chinese anime she's watched, but she only remembers a Japanese name. <clears throat> and I don't know what she's talking about, but I understand the Japanese though. So it becomes this weird linguistic moment where she says something in Japanese. The Korean girl speaks something in Japanese. <clears throat> and I understand it and I translate that to Mandarin Chinese. And to see if it's right. And she says in Korean to ask Rachel to double confirm it. And Lycan's just there thinking, God damn, that's so Asian. <clears throat> but, um... Yeah, it's really interesting. Um, so that's that. And I wanted to stick around more. Honestly, I low-key expected today would be like, I'm just going to go out and drink and just be drunk for the first time in my life. It's going to be great. But that never happened. Like, of course, like I always miss out on the good stuff. So apparently a week ago, Rachel, Ashley, and Lycan were pre-gaming they were drinking at this place and they wanted to go to a usc frat house or party and the party got shut down and they went to another place to drink and ashley got so drunk she puked all over the uber driver's seat and they had to pay 150 dollars to clean it up and she rolled on the floor and hurt her elbow which is crazy this shit like this never happens when i'm around like people just don't have sex and don't get drunk and just like People act so normal when I'm around. Um, or, le- or at least in that sense, you know. So today, Rachel and Ashley and Lycan didn't drink that much. Because they're like, okay, enough is enough. So we drank a couple shots. We drank this barley drink, which is this milky, creamy, weird thing. And it smells really weird, but honestly, not that bad. And I drank like three shots of so- soju, or at least two and a half shots. And it's pretty nice. But again, like Rachel and Ashley didn't drink that much. And it's funny because I thought I was the only person who's never gotten drunk. But Mina and Ricky hasn't gotten drunk either. And I'm sure that, you know, when Rachel and Ashley and Ricky talking about their dating lives and their sex lives or whatever. I and Mina were really quiet because I know that I have no experience in sex and dating at all. Mina looks like she doesn't have any experience at all as well. She's just as quiet as me. So I'm not like the only, only person ever. But yeah, Mina talked about her weird roommates, like how the last place she lived in in LA is like, she lived with a witch, like a black woman who performs witchcraft, like she has a wand and everything. But yeah, anyways, I did drink a little bit. The alcohol is not that strong and they're pretty delicious, actually. Pretty sweet. Um... And then I just took a bus back home. I got the opportunity to draw on the fridge and draw at Rachel's window again uh, for aesthetics. It was really nice. Um, And it is around that time Natalie texted me. Oh, by the way, happy birthday. And I think that's pretty much all the cool stuff that happened today. And it's really good. Like, it's not like I didn't like get pissed drunk. And, you know, sometimes I feel like I'm standing on the edge of a cliff. Like when I confess to Leslie, like I'm breaking new ground. So today doesn't feel like that. Um, it You know how the four Hong Kong incident last year, it doesn't feel like that. We didn't go to 6 a.m. But it's still really nice and heartwarming and affirming. And Ricky even said, oh, I want to get drunk. Like maybe next week I can come back and we can have like a wine night and we can do a drinking match. And I'm like, man, I wish I could join. And Ricky's like, oh, yeah, you know, before you leave. Um, but yeah, I'm glad I'm able to get home a little earlier because now I can watch the second half of Pather Panchali. I thought that they're going to install a projector at the apartment so that we can like watch a movie together. But that didn't happen, which made it easier for me because now I can just go home earlier to finish the second half of Pather Panchali. And I can even prepare myself for tomorrow's huge, huge interview, which is going to be insane. Um, I need to charge everything up for tomorrow, so. Also forgot to mention that for the cake, we have tiramisu. 
they actually found it and it's not bad. It's not the most caffeine heavy tiramisu, which is great because the man needs to sleep. Um, and then on top of that, we had snacks like some shrimp chips and some like um, seaweed chip thing, uh, which is really nice. And like when we pulled out the shrimp chip, it's like Koreans know what it is. I know what it is. I'm from Hong Kong. And Ricky, who has lived in Vietnam, knows what it is. And I guess Ashley grew up around Asian culture, so she knows what it is. So we all collectively know what it is. So, yeah, just hanging out with Asians just make everything easier, you know? Yeah. Yeah. 